Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese, and today we're going to make photo puzzles. Now, I think of a puzzle as kind of a jigsaw puzzle, and I have one in the shape of a heart here. Now, this is actually die cut, and I'm not going to give you a project where you have to buy a die cut. To cut these out by hand is kind of difficult because all of these curves and, you know, how you cut this needs to match all the, you know, the cuts in the other pieces that it has to attach to it. So we, I am going to show you, if you're interested in this die, I'll show you some possibilities at the end. But I realized puzzles can also be done the ancient Chinese way with tangrams. So here is the photo of Addison. She's born on the 4th of July, so she's wearing her 4th of July glasses. This was probably taken on her birthday, I'm going to guess. And if you look at the back, I've loosely taped it together, but this is the tangram puzzle pieces. Tangrams can be tricky to put back together. I think it's easiest, whether you're making this for an adult or for a child, to create a frame so that the puzzle is going to sit inside and they know as they're building it, they can start tucking things that have 90 degree angles into the corners. In order to do this, I am going to start with a picture of Addison. I ran it through the Xyron machine because it's just a photocopy, just on regular copy paper. And I copied it onto some red cardstock to give it some body. I think in hindsight it would have been better if I even did it on poster board because these are all going to be straight edges and they're not going to be difficult to cut. At any rate, in order to cut it into the pieces, we're going to learn how to make a tangram. But before you cut it apart, like I said, I think it's easier for whoever you give it to to reassemble it if there's a frame. So set this down and just in case you haven't been exactly the same when you've cut your square, Mark on the back that the top of the frame is right here so that when you set this down so that it reads where this is the top, trace around it with a pencil, which I've already done. And we're going to go back later and we'll use a paper trimmer to cut this. Once you've done that, now it's safe to go ahead and cut this out into its puzzle pieces. So I am going to first before you can cut it into puzzle pieces, you need to know where you mark it. So you need to know how to create the puzzle. I cut it or I marked it with pencil and then I realized that's not very helpful for you. So I'm going to go back with a black pen and I'm going to mark exactly how I did this. Now I'm going to go from corner to corner on a diagonal. So I'm going to go back with black marker and I'm going to go right over the top of my pencil lines and that way you'll see how to build this in stages in the order that I did it. So laying down my straight edge, I'm marking the first line that's the one in black. The next line, what I did was I took my ruler and since this is a five inch square, what I did is I came in to mark the middle, I needed to come in two and a half inches. So if I come in, this is tricky to do upside down, but if I lay this down, so that I'm going from the five inches and I mark, you can see it's marked here at two and a half. I do the same thing on this side. Here is the halfway point, the two and a half inches. So I'm going to lay my ruler back down and going from those two marks that mark the midpoint of those two sides, I'm going to draw the next line. Now I'm going to draw a diagonal, so I'm going to lay my ruler down, but I'm not going to go all the way to this tip. I'm going to start at one end and I'm going to stop at the black line I just made. I'll lay the ruler down so that I'm going from tip to tip. But when I draw the, the line, I'm going to stop short of going all the way to the corner. I'm going to stop at the black line right here that I just made and go from there to the corner. So that gives me that line. All right, now this, I need to create this square. This square, if I measure, is a one and three quarter inch square. So if I come down here and I mark one and three quarter inches is right there. So from that mark to the end, I'm going to draw from that tip to there. And you can see I've now created the triangle and the square. 
for this final cut, I want to take from the middle here, from this intersection to the end, I want to see the dimension of that. And when I lay my ruler down, I can see that it is three and a half inches from this corner to this exact middle. So half of three and a, and a half is one and three fourths. So I mark one and three fourths with my pencil or my marker. And then from this intersection where these two lines meet to the mark I just made, I draw this line. And it gives me the final. You now have all of the pieces that you need to create your tangram puzzle. Now it's just a question of cutting it out. So I'm going to cut, and this is going to be the back. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut out all of the pieces. So if I take and just cut on the lines. So I am going to cut see the challenge that this is going to be when it's time to put it back together. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and continue to cut these pieces. If I flip these over, they might even still be so that they sort of, <laughs> they've moved a little, but you can see how much fun it's going to be to put the whole thing back together. And as I said, it's simpler to do if you have a frame. And in order to do the frame, let me show you, if you have a paper trimmer like this, this one is a Fiskars. If I put my hand under here, the wire that's right here is where your cut line is going to be. And it means that you can line up. So my pencil lines that I already made, I can slide this around until the pencil line. Let me see if I can get my hand under here. There we go. I'm going to move this until the pencil lines are lined up so that the wire is sitting exactly over the top of my pencil line. Then what I'm going to do is slide this into position. I like to start by cutting somewhere more in the middle and I'm going to go to both ends. So I'm going to punch it through and cut until I get to this end and this guide, when it lines up with the intersecting line, is when you stop. And then continuing to hold the paper in place, I'm now going to slide it until I get my cut line to continue up to the top of the frame. And you can see if I lift this up, I can see if I've gone all the way to the edges. It looks like I have. So now I'm going to just turn this. And I find it easier to get that little blade out of the way while I'm lining it up. But once it's lined up, then it's pretty simple to just repeat the same process. So now as I'm making my final cut, this little square inside should just pop out. Well, that's nice. Oops, it's nice when it works. This little blade just needs to go right back into that channel. Just put it down. Just put the paper cutter out of the way. All right. So now it's time to assemble the puzzle. 
so, and I'm trying to do it upside down to you, which may not be the simplest thing to do. Or actually, you know what? It, maybe it's actually easier. I don't even know. I'm not sure if that's right or not, but we'll see. You can see how the photo really helps figure out where everything goes. There we go. This is the version that is the tangram. If you want to do, as I suggested, you can do a heart if you're going to make enough Valentine's that it's worth it to you or other times of the year that you want to send heartfelt messages, let's say, there is, um, I think it's $20, is a Sizzix puzzle die that cuts out the heart into four puzzle pieces. So here's the die. Here's what it looks like when it's just cut into the four puzzle pieces and I've just put a little piece of tape to hold behind it. But once again, you can cut out, as I've done here, a photo. And also, I think I would, even with the heart, I would cut out a frame. You can go ahead and if you want to fasten it onto this pink background. And then you're going to, let me take this apart. So when you send this in an envelope, these pieces are going to just be scattered. And the person that you're sending it to is going to have the fun of putting it back together. Now this is doing it, like I said, with a photograph. But if you don't have a photo handy or that's not your thing, you can also on a piece of paper before you cut it into the puzzle pieces, you can write your Valentine message. Cut it into puzzle pieces, drop it into the envelope, and then the message will reveal itself when the puzzle's reassembled. It's so much fun to open an envelope and discover loose puzzle pieces just waiting to be assembled into a heartfelt message or even a photo.